On Shop Hustle this week, I've got a shocking subject for you because the shocks on this buggy, the Polaris Dragon used snowmobile that we have, need to be rebuilt. But first, we gotta get them off. Hope you don't mind, but I came preloaded with a few puns. Hopefully we'll be able to compress everything into one TV segment. Stay tuned, we're about to spring into action. I hope you don't mind, because I really don't want to dampen your experience. I know it's a lot to absorb, but this is a pretty easy job. I know the puns are bad, but I'm sure you're going to rebound from them. I win. Don't worry, we're bumping up against the end here. You say that like it's a, oh, ram mounts, look at that. Oh, hang on a sec, we're finishing up here. Get out of the way. Got like one more pun to do. Things are going right down the monotubes now. Shocks don't live forever. Time and distance are constantly working against them. But on sleds like our Dragon, at least they're rebuildable. So we've come here to see John at Accelerated Technologies because I'm pretty sure these shocks are shot. Accelerated Technologies is probably 15, 20 years old now and it was born on the Canadian road racing scene where we were developing, testing and riding high performance super bikes, uh, GP bikes, road race bikes, production bikes. And it was very cyclical, the business cycle, in terms of the Canadian seasons. We were crazy busy from April to September, and then it would just die off. And it gave me time to do some of my own personal stuff, which was enjoy ATVing and snowmobiling. And we started to, to improve the suspension systems on those vehicles. And, and then we took that to the public. And, and the response has been just crazy. It's been phenomenal. We, uh, Elka suspension is has joined us, we kind of brought them into the field of snowmobile racing and snowmobile riding, and now they're, they're, they're doing huge business in, in the snowmobile industry, and, and we're kind of at the forefront of that. What we learned from pavement racing, you know, we, things like swing arm angle, and drive grip on a motorcycle, weight transfer, acceleration, deceleration, uh, how the tires load up. Um, when you change the ride height, in the back of a motorcycle and, and you raise the back of the motorcycle and the forks will steepen. We call that the, the rake and the trail relationship directly applied to snowmobiles. And a lot of the people in the snowmobile industry didn't even realize that themselves. And it's been a fun journey that way. Almost every shock nowadays is rebuildable. There's some steel body shocks, black in color, no nitrogen fitting on the top of the shock. Those are not rebuildable, but they are the minority. Most of the aluminum body shocks are rebuildable, and boy, do they need it. Uh, we hate to tell people that these things are just like your engine. They break in and start generating contamination the first probably three tanks of gas, and they would love to have an oil change after 500 kilometers. You know, again, we feel guilty and we telling people that, but but the, the poor shock has a small, small amount of oil in it and that piston is going up and down in the bore, honing itself the clearance that it wants. It's knocking all the high spots from machining off, all that sediment and contamination goes down and sits around the shock shaft. And it start, the shock now starts to get sticky. Uh, we may or may not perceive it. Suspension degrades every time we ride our snowmobile by 1% or 2%, so you don't notice it. It's not a big, it's not like blowing a drive belt. 
You know when you blow a drive belt, you come to a stop. When the suspension starts to slowly degrade, we don't notice it right away. But then we get in there, we get all that contamination out, uh, we clean the seal head, sometimes we'll change the seal. Often we don't need any parts, we're just getting out the dirt, grime, grit, and then we're putting in a good synthetic oil. The ride is often better than it is when it was new, and we've also hit that shock at a point in its degradation, so the, the ride quality improvement is sometimes stunning. So uh, for safety, it's a good thing to do, um, and uh, ride enjoyment, it's a good thing to do, and often we take the opportunity to just give them a little bit of education while they're getting their shock serviced. We tell them the trick, put a little tie wrap, put a zip tie on the shock shaft, cut it off, and now you've got some feedback. How much travel am I using when I'm going down the trail? Am I hitting the bumper constantly? I've run into a situation where I've had pro professional racers come and tell me that a shock is way, way too stiff. I'm, it's beating me up. And I look at it and the tie wrap I snuck on it, it's stuffed into the bottom of the shock. It's into the bump rubber. And I stiffen the shock up, maybe I add some preload. I add some compression damping, they'll go out come back in and say, that's way better. And I stiffened the shock up, I firmed it up, but now it's not hitting the bump rubber every, every corner, every, every issue. We're, we're now we're not using all the travel and a, and a one cent zip tie has given us that information. So things like that, we love to take the opportunity to educate and provide good service.